caffeine and anger are what keep me alive and what keep me functioning. So, you know, and they're all cyclical. They just like feed into each other. How does it work with like all online? Was it oh, mostly? I'm in, per I'm in person. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, I'm hybrid. So I've got, I've got my Monday and Friday lectures are online. And then Tuesdays, Thursdays, labs are in person and we're just, we can only have 12 students in the lab at a time and people have to stay apart from each other. There's a lot of yelling and nobody can hear anybody because of masks and it's a pain Can in the I interrupt ass. you? How does this look? It looks, does it, does it does PowerPoint, right? Yep. Okay. And I can see a QR code. Okay. So it looks money. That's good. Okay. I'll test the QR code. It works. Oh yeah, fill out the QR code. So if I open Slack, you, you guys are still looking at the PowerPoint, right? Yeah, we're still on the yeah. PowerPoint. Well, I can tell you that my neighbors are all on Zoom or something right now also. Why your internet's like My internet just went to shit. Apparently 7 p.m. is when everybody decides to start watching their video lectures. That or it's Netflix time. Hey, if they watch them at all, am I right, fellas? <laughs> Minutes in, start listening for other noises. So, anyone taking any fun classes? Oh, thanks, sir. What's up? There's no alcohol, so I didn't recognize you, you know? <laughs> oh, <laughs> <my God. laughs> How are you, bro? Doing all right. How have you been? I'm good. I'm good. Just tired of, you know, coronavirus. Yeah. I just put out the resumption plan to ME, so hopefully we get back to that soon. All right, it's seven o'clock. Do we want to start now or give people a couple more minutes just to filter in? I guess a few more. It's just a few give like one popping in. Yeah, if anybody, I mean, feel free to unmute and ask questions if you guys want or all here to help you guys out. Fill you in on what's going on. You guys yeah, you can guys... Drop, drop questions in the chat as well. Uh, if you don't know how to scan the QR code, if you just hold down on it on Snapchat or on I think iOS camera app has it as well. Um, it should pull up the link. There's also an app called Google Lens that both scans QR codes and translates things written in different languages for you automatically on the screen. So I highly awesome. recommend it if you have Android. Also recommended because our entire presentation is going to be in the Russian language. <laughs> Savage. It's true, the Russians are taking over then. They are known for their rocketry. Or lack thereof.
You guys see the recording symbol, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I can, I'm pretty Wait, sure if it's not cloud, it's at least local, and I'm pretty sure I have enough. Yeah, to the guys in chat, um, you could use either email. Just whatever email you're going to check. Um, hold Wait. on. I'll, I'll, I'll get you the QR code link. Yeah. Oh, I'm still kind of Joel. <laughs> Joel, we can see your your thingy if you don't want to show us. I'm going to make a poll. I want to see how everybody got here. So. What are the answers? Uh, Black. Run. Say again? Friends. Word of mouth, friend. Oh, friend. I didn't know we had a Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> we did. Uh, it was the one who got the watches. Uh, yeah, once you're done with that poll, we'll uh, we'll start the presentation. Hey guys, you want to go? Hold on, I'm, I don't know how to post the poll. Okay, there. Joel, is there a link to the Slack that you can share in the chat also? So anybody that wants to join it can click in the chat to jump in? Yeah. Oh, that link that link doesn't link, but you can copy and paste. I'll go ahead and post it. All right, that's awesome to see that most of you guys are already on the Slack. Yeah, but we have 13 others. <laughs> this is true. I wonder what that is. <laughs> yeah, if you guys can send us in the chat what that, what you, where you came or where you heard of us from, that'd be nice. I don't suppose you guys look at the BEC newsletter that gets sent out every now and then. BEC still exists? <laughs> Yeah, I, I emailed them to announce our uh, GBM right now. Good call. Good call. Oh, that's kind cool. of them. Okay. All righty. Ready? You want to get started? Yeah, let's go ahead. All right. Well, welcome, guys, to the first GBM of the uh, fall 2020 semester for the Swamp Launch Rocket team. I'm uh, I'm Julian Rodriguez. I'm the president for this semester or for this year. Um, just a little bit about me. I've been doing, I've been on this team for the past couple of years. Um, I got my L2 certification through this team, so you'll hear you'll hear more about the certification process later. But feel free to ask me anything um, about joining sub teams, what you're interested in. Um, I'm always here. 
and you can always text me or call me if you have any questions. So hopefully you guys have a really uh, great semester and hopefully you guys find a enjoyment and uh, something beneficial from this team because there's definitely a lot of things going on and it's really educational. So yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Bilal Hassan. Um, I'm the VP internal and I'm the IREC flight dynamics lead. Um, here are my address and my phone number if you need to call or email me. Hello, I'm Joel Perez. I'm the VP external and I'm also the structures lead. And yeah. Hey guys. I'm Ireland Brown, and I'm the team treasurer. Hello, my name is Chaz Wilson, and I am the team safety officer. Hey guys, I'm Dola Rudowski. I am the, our NASA SL project manager. Um, I'm studying electrical engineering. When I'm not building rockets, I like to build Arduino robots. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about NASA SL on the next slide. But if you guys are interested in getting involved, uh, definitely send me a message either on Slack, email, or you have my phone number. Um, you wanna move on to the next slide? So this year for NASA SL, our challenge is to launch a rocket between 3,500 and 5,500 feet. That rocket has to carry a planetary landing system that is capable of being ejected during descent between I think 500 and 1,000 feet. Um, after it's ejected, it has to land, align itself vertically, and then take and transmit a 360 degree panoramic picture. So NASA SL is one of our two competitions. This is a very design process oriented competition. So a lot of what we do is um, creating reports for NASA and then presenting them. Yo, Adam. My, my bad, my internet sucks. Um, okay, uh, my name is Adam Hussein. Um, I'm the IREC project manager. Uh, this is my second year doing IREC, so uh, yeah. Um, I'm a fourth year aerospace engineering student um, doing rocketry for a long, long time. Yeah, you can see me there riding an elephant. Okay, so um, IREC Spaceport America Cup. So basically what this is, is IREC is the International Rocketry um, Engineering Competition. So they have a couple of competitions that they do. The one that we are participating in is the Spaceport America Cup. Um, we started participating in the Spaceport Cup last year. Um, we weren't able to go to competition because of Corona, obviously. Um, basically what this competition entails, it's more for uh, very experimental rockets. So you have a lot more control over what exactly you wanna do with your rocket. Um, they actually break up the competition into different categories based on what kind of propulsion you're using. So they have liquid, they have solid propulsion, and then they have hybrid propulsion as well. We specifically chose um, solid propulsion just because we felt like that was the category we can do the best with. And then they also break down the propulsions by the actual altitude that you want to achieve. So we chose to go to 10,000 feet. The other option was actually 30,000 feet. Um, within the competition, we are trying to innovate some cool payloads that we think can be beneficial to rocketry as a whole. So last year we set out trying to design and implement two. Um, they were the active control system and then the drift control system. You'll hear about those later from the actual leads. Basically, we were able to make a lot of progress on the altitude control system. Uh, we actually built a prototype and got to test that out. And that was pretty cool. For the drift control system, that was mostly actually developing what we wanted to do and coming up with a basic design. Um, this year, we wanna focus on more so completing that design and actually getting a prototype built and innovating it to the point where we can um, implement it on actual rocket. So we did start building a rocket last year um, our plan currently is to finish that rocket and then put on both of our payloads and eventually fly it. We hope to fly that rocket um, sometime this fall, but yeah.
Yeah, so here are some photos from last semester. This was at our launch, and then the one on the right, that's our full scale that we were planning on taking to a competition for NASA. Oh, um, so just a really quick primer of like what we do. We do high powered rocketry, which um, can be um, any like small rocketry, like any small like uh, small like rocket to a large metal full size rocket that's like even bigger than a, a person. So like our rockets, for example, will go like 10 feet high or sorry, not 10 feet high, like 10 feet in length. Um, or like 10 to 15 length, feet in length, which, and really heavy too, so. All right, hey everyone, I'm Tyler. Um, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yep. Okay, I wasn't showing up on Zoom. Anyway, um, this is, I guess, my fourth year on the team now and my second doing IREC payloads. Hello, I'm Alex Creston, and I've been on the team now for three years. Been part of the student launch payload for all three years, and I'm currently in charge of it this year. Okay, so payloads in general are pretty pretty vague. Um, just basically, the reason you launch a rocket is to take a payload somewhere. Um, it can be anything from a rover to the things that SL comes up with to the drift control we're doing to IREC. Um, yeah, pretty straightforward there. Um, as far as the specifics, I'll let Alex uh, talk about NASA first. So for NASA Student Launch, we have an interesting payload that we have to do this year. So for this, we pretty much have to build kind of a lander. And for this lander, we have to deploy it from the rocket with in midair. And then we have to have this payload drift down with a parachute and then land on the ground and then has to be able to self-orientate itself to within five degrees of vertical all autonomously. We cannot have any interaction with the vehicle at all. And then we have to take and transmit a 360 degree panorama of the landing zone that it lands in. So this is a very intricate payload design and requires a lot of different expertises from mechanical, electrical, programming for autonomy, and a bunch of other different sub teams. Hey. Okay. Let me touch yeah. on Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, so for the drift control, um, normally when you pop the parachute, depending on weather conditions, um, the rocket can actually drift pretty far. Uh, last year, we actually had one drift over our heads and land in the swamp behind us. So the idea for the drift control system is to be able to steer ourselves back towards the landing zone. That way it'll be much safer for any of the components inside and it'll be much easier to recover. So that's what we started developing last year. We want to go ahead and finish that this year and hopefully that can become kind of a mainstay in rockets in the future. Next slide, right? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Hey, can you hear me okay? Yep. Sweet. Uh, my name's Asia Pinto. Uh, this year I'm the IREC Altitude Control Lead, uh, formerly known as the Active Controls Lead. I've been on this team since freshman year. I've been in Active Controls um, ever since, and I'm really excited to lead the team this year. Um, there's my email, and feel free to text me at any time if you have any questions. Uh, next slide. Okay, so for Active Controls, um, we're really just going to be discovering new ways to adjust the rocket's altitude. Uh, we're prioritizing the construction of reliable and cross-compatible air brake systems, and we're gathering the data from rocket launches. Uh, with the altitude, static and dynamic air pressures, velocity, acceleration, um, there's a lot of room in this team for research, innovation. Um, we're, we like teach uh, aerodynamics and flight dynamic analysis. So there's definitely a lot of um, room for like experimental research, um, innovation, prototyping, and it's a lot of fun. So please join us. Uh, hello, my name is Colin. I'm the SL Avionics and Recovery Lead. Um, this is my second year on the rocket team. Oh, sorry. Hi, I'm Bryce. I'm um, IREC version of the Avionics and Recovery Lead. Uh, so in Avionics and Recovery, we, um, in, on our team, we use a dual deploy system, which means we'll deploy two parachutes, one at Apogee and then one 
at a much lower altitude so that we can limit the drift. Um, so in our team, we'll design the avionics bay, which is where we'll house all our recovery electronics. And then next to the bays will be where the parachutes are in separate compartments. Um, and we get to use black powder, so that's always fun. Yeah, so um, basically what we're doing is uh, we're going to be doing a lot of CAD um, in the project to CAD up um, our whole design. So that could be a great opportunity to learn about some CAD. Um, we do a lot of comparing components with each other. And yeah, do uh, you want to talk about NASA SL? Oh yeah, so for NASA SL this, this year we'll be deploying the payload as well at altitude. So we have to also account for that. Um, our deployment has to be from apogee down to landing. It has to be within 90 seconds and we can't exceed a certain amount of energy upon impact. Um, so that just means that we have to really be careful with our numbers and yeah. Yeah. So uh, basically um, in the IREC version, uh, what we're doing is we have to kind of interface with um, Tyler's design for his payload. So since the avionics and recovery has to do so much with the parachute, um, we're going to be working a lot with Tyler to try to get the, our deployment system for our recovery to work with his parachute. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, that's what we're going to be doing. I muted everybody. Request to unmute. Good idea. Okay. Okay, I can um, talk about this really quick. Okay. So um, we at IREC are still searching for a structures lead. Um, uh, basically what the structures lead does is they are in charge of the actual airframe of the rocket, deciding what kind of components we use, deciding the shapes of components, deciding the materials of components. Um, they're also a big part of the manufacturing of the rocket. So the structures lead basically overlooks the manufacturing. Um, last year, we had a really great structures lead. Um, he started doing a lot of stuff with composites, specifically carbon fiber. So if you guys are interested in working with composites or carbon fiber or fiberglass, and you guys are just good at structural analysis, things like that, making decisions based on decision matrices, um, we still have an open lead position for structures. So if that's something you feel like you're interested in, reach out to me at my email um, or any of the IREC leads, just reach out and we can definitely get you into that position. So, yeah. Uh, hello, I'm Joel Perez. Um, I've been with the team for about two and a half years. So I joined like last, last spring. And then starting last year, I was the structures lead and then I'm also the structures lead again for NASA SL this year. So um, what our main goal as structures is, is to be able to find out what materials work best for a rocket. And by doing that, we have to like look up what different materials you have available to us and then why each material is best for its intended purpose. And then after we're able to choose what material we want to use, we're going to be able to manufacture them so that we can have components to build up our rocket. The rocket is mainly out of like bulk components and then we'll tend to in the lab manufacture them down to however we want them. So like for the airframes, uh, we buy them in huge 48 inch or like maybe 72 inch long tubes and then we would cut them down to whatever size we want them for each component. And then for fins, they would buy them in sheets and then we would use like either the bandsaw or whatever to cut them down into whatever fin size we designed. And then for specifically for NASA SL, there's a lot of paperwork that goes behind the general report. So some of that paperwork is doing material selection, saying we chose fiberglass over blue tube because we believe it to be stronger or because it has better water protection. And then we'll specifically go into that as the year progresses and we'll teach you about how, how to do these material selections and then how to use some of the machinery safely.
Okay. Matthew. As, okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Cool. I'm Matt, so I'm going to be the SL Flight Dynamics lead. This is actually my second year on the team, and my first year I worked with Bilal when he was the lead of this team. Hi, I'm Bilal. Um, I'm, I am now the IREC Flight Dynamics lead. Um, yeah, next slide. Okay, so flight dynamics is pretty much like the pre-design of the rocket. Um, we do we handle basically everything prior to manufacturing. Um, we design the rocket in in a software called Open Rocket, um, which doesn't have a lot of industry use. It's literally just a high-powered rocket simulator, but it gives us a lot of information that we can use to make sure that the rocket that we can accurately uh, project like the flight of the rocket its apogee and also how fast it's going to land at. So those are all extremely important, uh, important things that we need for a rocket, rocket's flight. We also use the program to select the motor that's going to power the rocket's flight. Um, yeah, next slide. All right, so like Bilal mentioned, we use Open Rocket as um, one of the primary ways that we simulate uh, our rocket's going to work with altitude, how we choose the motors, things like that. We also work on writing a MATLAB program to sort of write our own simulation too. So there's some more custom hands-on type stuff there. Um, one of the parts of the challenge is actually we need to predict the target apogee of the rocket. So um, our target right now is around 4,500 feet. At this stage in the design, we're really looking between 4,000 and 5,000. So part of the reason why we use open rocket is so we can simulate the rocket and see if it'll hit in that altitude. Um, and again, um, the other important part is determining the motor. So the most powerful motor we can have is a, a class L motor, which delivers an impulse of 5,120 Newton seconds. So basically running the simulations, we're trying to determine which motor within the limits that we have will basically get our rocket to the right altitude. Okay, and then on IREX side of the aisle, um, we've mostly finished or last year has mostly finished with the like general design and the, the simulation, uh, like the modeling of the rocket. So what we're gonna be doing now for the rest of the semester is just CFD analysis on certain parts of the ro a rocket. And we're gonna be ro working with other sub teams and test their structures and test like, is this, is this material safe, safe for, or is this like uh, geometry safe for flight or not? Next slide, please. So like we said before, modeling and simulation is one important part of flight dynamics, but propulsion is um, the other really important part. So again, talking about rockets, there, there are a lot of different type, or sorry, talking about motors, there are a lot of different types we can choose from. In our case, we use um, solid motors and they're rated by class. So these classes are represented by letters. And that's sort of, you could think of it represents how powerful the motor is, right? It delivers a different total impulse um, and these are sorted into classes. You can think of the total impulse as the amount of energy in it. So like I said before, um, L class is the most powerful type of motor we can use for the SL competition. And basically by running simulations, we use these different motors in simulations and figure out which one will work the best for our rocket. Megan, can you unmute your, uh, or do I have to do it? Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Megan Winack, and I'm the SL testing lead this year. Um, this is my second year on the team. Um, I was a part of the testing lead, or I was a part of the testing team last year, and now I'm back this year as the lead. Um, there's my contact information if you have any questions for me or anything. Um, you can go to the next slide. All right, so the testing team, um, I mean, it's pretty straightforward in the name. We're responsible for um, testing just and verifying the different components of the rocket, verifying the functionality and the integrity of the design and things like that. So we'll be working um, with the other leads and working with the entire system, really. Um, as you can see there, we're going to be conducting 
tests for the materials and for the launch vehicle itself with the payloads and with the avionics we work with all of those things um, so testing is a great um, it's a great opportunity if you want to um, get some experience with a lot of different parts of the rocket because we're going to be working with a lot of them um, and it's also a great way to get some good hands-on experience um, and we've been communicating you know with the situation now to see how we're going to be able to do that but um there's a video there of a separation, a subscale separation test from last year. So you can, I can play. I don't know, I hope it plays. It might not. Okay. But um, there you can see that's a separation test that we conducted last year. That was a fun test. But we're going to be doing, um, we're going to be working a lot this year with um, testing out the payload system and things like that. Um, so if you're interested, definitely join the SL testing Slack channel. Um, we're going to start meeting really soon, and I would love to see. Everyone there? Okay, so just to uh, sum it up, we have um, project manager Dylan Ergodowski, payloads Alexander Creston, structures Joel Perez, light dynamics Matthew Estenaz, avionics and recovery Colin Lark, testing Megan Winnack. You can contact uh, all of the SL team uh, on our Slack, their PMs, whatever uh, chat that you can find. And for IREC, we have uh, PM Adam Hussein, payloads, Tyler Scott, flight dynamics, that's me, avionics and recovery, Bryce Bem, active controls, Asia Pinto, and structural design, this could be you. Uh, apply to Adam, um, very, very desperate for a structures lead, but uh, it's a great opportunity. And just to add on to that, um, whatever sub teams you're interested in, just send the lead a message join their sub team Slack channel. Really the best way to get involved in the sub team is to join their Slack channel. Like you have to specifically join their channel. Um, that way you can keep involved or keep informed on all sub team meetings to really get involved. Um, and in case you, you're not sure how to do that right now, um, you just go to the next to the channels tab on the left on Slack, there's a plus sign where it says add channel or if you mouse over, it'll say add channels. Press uh, browse channels and then it, there you go. They're all there. Um, and here are some links that you guys can contact us at. Um, we're going to be posting on events on Facebook and you get, please join our Slack. Like most important thing is join our Slack. Keep up to date with us. Um, catch us on our Instagram and Twitter as well. Yeah, and then we got a, a final video about I don't know which launch it was, but it was from last year of our final full scale. Okay, so this pretty much sums it up for our presentation today. Thank you to everybody for coming out to our first GBM of the year. So I guess now we'll be opening up the Q&A if anybody has any questions about the team and then what we do. So I'm going to see if I'm going to unlock everybody so that they can talk, but we'll see how that goes. And then, yeah, just put in chat if you have any other questions too. labs are open. Currently, we're working to get back into the SDC, which is out by the solar park. Um, I'm not sure if everybody knows where that is, but it's right off 23rd Terrace by the by right outside of campus. Um, that's our main location where we do a lot of our manufacturing. We have a we have our own little space there. And then also we're trying to get back into the MEC student shop. Um, that's another place where we use more mills and lathes to, to produce some higher, some, some more complicated parts. But as of now, we can't be manufacturing, but I hope within the next couple of weeks, we start being able to get back into the spaces. So I can actually, <clears throat> As faculty, I can actually chime in on this one perfectly. UF is going to make an announcement as early as Monday about the next steps in reopening plans for allowing organizations back into laboratory spaces to, to operate. Once they say something, 
we'll know more. For the time being, there's still a lot of design work that needs to be done um, <clears throat> before any manufacturing can begin. So it's a great time to start getting involved with projects that can be done remotely. And just to answer Leonardo's question, um, what team should you join if you don't have any prior experience? And the answer to that is absolutely any of them. Um, as sub team leads, our job is to take in new members and teach them everything that we know about the sub system and then hopefully get them on board so that they can develop for the next year. So you don't need any prior experience for any of these teams. Um, really, whichever one just sound interesting to you. And if you guys have any more questions about which team you should join, feel free to send me a message on Slack and I'll help try to place you. Yeah, we're going to be having a lot of meetings where it's um, just just in the Slack, people are going to be posting their like meeting times. So if you just want to hop in and join the Zoom call, you don't have to say anything. But of course, it'd be preferred if like you interact with everyone. And there's no, you don't have to like definitely like I, I will be structures and structures only. You can join any of the sub teams and we all love to see new faces. So you talk about our cool rockets. Just, just join all the sub teams. Yeah, pretty much. Join all, join all of them. Once you know, pick one. And our next GBMs will be a lot more uh, design focused with a lot of the teams presenting. So if you are curious about, you know, the more specifics of all the teams, just make sure you show up to those, and that'll get you a better overview of what's happening across all the systems of the rocket. Uh, there's the question about if you're not going to be in UF this semester. Um, currently in the fall, a lot of what SL does is we create a design and we start preparing a report. So we really don't need to be in the lab at all until the very end of this semester. So like a lot of what we're doing right now is we're creating a proposal. This proposal is essentially saying, hey NASA, we've read the, the guidelines of the report this year and this is how we're going to go about and carry it out. So like it includes saying, our rocket is going to be like 128 inches. It's going to have a 5.5 inch diameter. It's going to have a 5.5 inch diameter because of our payload. Our payload needs to be able to fit inside of it. So a lot of that's going to be done over Zoom for the next few months until we um, until we have to create our subscale, which isn't going to happen for a little bit. I know, like I'm a lead, and I'm not going to be living in Gainesville this semester. Um, so if anyone's in the Orlando area, when we do start manufacturing, I'll be going up to Gainesville and I'll, I'll be giving rides if anyone needs it. And if you're not sure if you want to do NASA SL or IREC, um, I definitely recommend just trying out both. I mean, just like between the two sub teams, you can try out the two competitions. You don't have to necessarily fully commit to one right away. Um, NASA SL is a little bit more design process oriented. Um, IRECA is a little bit more experimental, but definitely I would just recommend trying them both and seeing which one fits best for you. Yeah, and just a heads up, um, meeting times for everyone will probably be posted very soon in their um, respective sub team Slack channels. And um, we'll probably also be scheduling the next GBM, which will probably be the week after next week. But um, yeah, we'll post that in the announcements chat. Yeah, so yeah, so uh, when you're in the Slack, it has that little sidebar on your left side and has channels. If you click that and you click that little plus there and then browse channel, you can see all the channels for basically everyone. Also, I'd just like to mention that if you're an electrical engineering major, computer engineering, um, computer science, definitely check out SL payloads because this year we really need people who know something about electronics. Um, this year's payload is very 
I want to say electronics heavy because we have to transmit that panoramic picture and do everything autonomously. So if you know anything about electronics, please check out SO payloads. If you don't know anything about electronics and you want a fun challenge, join SL payloads. I would just like to add, like, even if you don't know anything about electronics, as Dr. Nemo was saying, like, we still need a lot. There's still a lot of, like, mechanical design that also needs to go into the payload as well, besides some of the mechanical. So definitely don't let that discourage you either. Okay. Um, so this is the Slack channel I'm in general right now. Your channel, when you initially join, isn't going to look like this. There's not going to be this many channels. So you're going to want to make sure you're in Swamp Launch, right? You go to Channels, and then there's a plus sign. Go to Browse Channels, and then you can see whatever channel you want to join. So Announcements, IREC stuff, or SL stuff. And then it says Leave here because I'm in, already in it, but it should say Join. And then I joined every single team because I want to know about what everybody's doing on the team. Uh, so, Lane, you're asking if structures needs people. Like every single team needs people. The the more people that there are on the team, the more that we can help spread out the workload. And you don't have to necessarily be stuck to one sub team or one team between SL and IREC. You can jump around. That's probably the best way to learn about everything that everybody has to know. Like I'm I'm like reasonably knowledgeable about structures, but if you ask me about electronics, I probably wouldn't know anything. Yeah, I would definitely not like encourage um, joining multiple sub teams, not just that you can. That's how I ended up being a lead is because I was on two at the same time and eventually worked my way to joining the SL competition team. So yeah, I would definitely recommend just join a bunch and then whichever ones you like the most stick around with them. There will probably be team polos. If you don't see me rep in mine here, um, but yeah. Uh, that'd probably be a spring thing. Um, either, wait, did we get the budget for that or not? For the polos? That is... A, there's a part of the budget for polos. That's what SG gave us. So. <laughs> we're also trying to... We're also looking into getting team lawn sleeve shirts as well. But again, that'll probably be later in the year. Team quarter zips? No? I want a team uh, windbreakers, what I really want. But we'll yeah, definitely windbreakers over quarter zips. Windbreakers are awesome. I love let's them. Be, let's be frank. Spencer was just showing off. <clears throat> yeah. Got some back rooms, cheaply made merch, $10 each. So you see me? your background. Yeah, it is. Yeah, there's three people who haven't joined yet. You need, uh, you need to get on that. That's 3%, not three. Well, there's 3% who haven't joined, so. <laughs> Approximately one person really needs to join this I think one and a half people. Spencer, with your background, you can give us a tour of the SDC. Is anybody interested about what we do, or do you want to see, you, would you like to see pictures about what we've, like, we've taken over the years? All right, I guess over the year. We got some old rockets behind me. So realistic. If campus opens up, you'll see this place eventually. Yeah, well, we did get indication around September 14th, question mark. 
that maybe something will happen, but. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, thanks for coming out. Make sure you join our Slack. That's where we'll be posting most of our messages. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, we almost killed the cow, but let's not talk about that. Okay. Thanks for coming.